everyone, my name is Tori, this is Novel Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some spinster recommendations to share with you. So if you don't know what a spinster is, basically it's someone that has been through a couple of seasons, in the ton and they're not of normal age to get married so basically they're in their like mid 20s ish obviously these are historical romance recommendations for spinsters i just love a spinster because i feel like they just don't care anymore they're over everything they do what they want they're a little bit more risque which I appreciate, especially in a historical romance. So I have seven to share with you. I went through a whole like historical romance phase a month or two ago where I just read a whole bunch of historicals. I found some that have spinsters and I wanted to share them with you. So let's just jump into the first book. The first one I have is Falling in Love with the Duke by Lorraine Heath. So this one I actually put in my disability and chronic illness representation video where I gave you some historic romances with those representations. I put it in there because the male character in here, Ash, who's the Duke of Ashbury, he has what is similar to dyslexia. It's dyscalculia, which is instead of with letters being mixed up, it's numbers. So that's always great with him. But then we have Minerva, Miss Dodger. She has had six unsuccessful seasons in the ton. She has not found a husband, so she goes to a nightclub, which is called the Nightingale Club, but to have one night of pleasure so she could basically lose her virginity. That's always fun. That's always nice. Of course, the women wear masks at this club. The men don't. So she recognizes Ash, the Duke of Ashbury, really quickly. He doesn't really know her just because of the mask, but he's like enamored with her right from the beginning. And then their romance starts from there. It's fantastic. I loved this book. Was this my, I, this may have been my first Lorraine Heath book. No, this is my second Lorraine Heath book that I've ever read. And I love her writing. I love how she tells the story. Definitely pick up this one, not only for the disability and chronic illness representation, but also because she's an amazing and funny spinster. I love her so much. So the next book is All Scott and Bothered by Kerrigan Byrne. So this series technically, which is the Devil You Know series, all of the women in the first book, this happens to be the second book and the third book, they're all technically technically spinsters. They're a lot older, but it takes place in a different like time, a little bit later, like time period wise. So they're still technically considered spinsters because they're older and they're unmarried. They're doing other things while while doing that. Like the first book, she's like an architect. She's gone to school. Cecilia like runs this kind of like school for girls and boys. So I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, Cecilia is like someone who has a very like hard past she's like trying to figure out and kind of run from still and then we have lord ramsey who is a scotsman we all know i love a scotsman obviously all scott and bothered it has a scotsman in here and he is someone that she meets but he's also someone that she's trying to save her business from because he's like lord chief justice he's a chief justice so he like dishes out the law right he thinks that something shady is going on with her business even though it's not and there's like whole this whole mystery behind it. I really enjoyed this one. Like I said, this was not like a traditional spinster recommendation, kind of like the first one, uh, Falling in Love with the Duke. But I really appreciate it because she is older. She has made a, like a life for herself already. So letting someone in is kind of like not unappealing to her, but she's more hesitant to do so. And I thought their romance was really, really good. I love Lord Ramsay. He does. He's an asshole in this book. Just putting it out there. But the groveling is so good at the end. Like, he grovels really, really well. And yeah, Cecilia is a really cool character. Obviously, we see her in the first book. You could read them as standalones. Like, you could read this by itself. The characters in the first book are there, but they're not, like, a main part of the story. But the first book does give some background to all three women because they all come from the same boarding school. So I'm recommending the second book. You could read the first book. She's also a spinster. She's more of like a blue stocking because she, um, she's an architect. She's very like studious, nerdy type thing. But still, this series is good. I love the first two books. Go check it out. The next book I have is The Spinster and the Rake by Eva Devon. Or Eva Devon. Can someone tell me how you pronounce it? Devon? Devon? If you want to be fancy, Devon. If you want to be normal, Devon, I think. Whatever. Obviously, she's a spinster. The spinster and the rake. Duh. So this book follows Georgiana and Edward. And Georgiana is such a funny spinster. I love her so much. I love her personality. I really like Edward. He is really funny too. I also put this in my chronic illness and, disabil and disability representation video because Edward is on the autism spectrum. Obviously that term autism and autism spectrum was not well known in this time period, but it comes out that that's what the representation of 
his illnesses. So I really enjoyed that, obviously, for the disability rep and chronic illness rep. But how they meet is so funny. I love this meeting. This may be one of my favorite meetings ever, like how characters meet. Basically, she's okay with being a spinster. She's obviously still forced to go to parties. Duh. So when she goes to a party at Edward's house, she kind of escapes and goes like try to tries to like find time for herself. Like so she finds herself in a library and she's sitting in the chair. There's a dog in there and it's great. In walks Edward. Now we see the meat cute from his point of view. So he walks into his library and sees a woman sitting in his chair petting his dog. And he's like, get out. She's like, no, I don't want to leave. I'm hiding. He was like, this is my library. Get out. And she's like, make me like kiss me and, and then I'll leave. And so they kiss. He obviously kisses her to make her leave. And in walks Edward's aunt. And she's like, now you two have to get married. You've been compromised, basically. This is the new duchess. And I find it so funny. Their romance, um, it does take time to grow. But it is a very cute and sweet romance. And both of the characters grow as well. I really love this one. He's not, as much as the title says, rake. He's not really rake-ish. It's not talked about that often. Like, it's mentioned like, oh, he has the reputation of a rake. But it's not as rake-ish as I've read other books where they're rakes. If so, if you don't really like rakes, he's not really a rake. It doesn't really go into that much detail, but I love this book nonetheless. It's fantastic. Definitely check this one out too. The next book I have is The Duke's Perfect Wife by Jennifer Ashley. I love this book. I really enjoyed Hart's story. This is the fourth book in the Mackenzie and McBride series. Do you have to read all of them? No. But each of the McKenzie brothers for the first four books and then, and then the McBrides later, they all kind of not build on top of each other, but you see them all throughout. So I would suggest reading them. Now, the first book in the series is The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie, which is a well-known popular book and historical romance on booktube, especially romance tube. We all love it. We all read it. That one is great. So but if you want to and you haven't continued the series, please do because I love Hart so much. He's very like much a mystery throughout all of the books. Like he really has, he's not really talked about that much. He's kind of just like the head of the, he's the oldest, he's the head of the family, he's doing what he's doing, right? But then you have Eleanor. So she's a spinster. She's a lot older. This book is a little bit different than some of the other recommendations I have only because it's more of like a second chance romance in this book. Eleanor and Hart have had a past together. If I'm remembering correctly, Hart actually proposed to Eleanor. She said no, or they broke off their engagement. He married someone else, had a baby. They unfortunately both died in childbirth. And then like years have passed. Hart has had mistresses and women and very rakish, I guess you want to call it. Eleanor comes back because Hart is being blackmailed and she's trying to help him. So it's kind of blackmail. I guess you could just call it that. And their romance goes from there. I really enjoy it. I love Eleanor's character. She is fucking hilarious. She is literally like the definition of what I love in a spinster. She doesn't care. She does what she wants. She doesn't care if you're a man. She's going to do literally whatever she wants. No one can take charge of her. No one. And it's fantastic. And I love it. Somehow Hart does rant, manage to kind of wrangle her in a little bit. I do love it. I love their their like banter back and forth because it is funny. She does not listen to Hart whatsoever. And Hart's not used to that because he's the oldest. I mean, the McKinsey's really don't really listen to him e either. But in most situations, they do. So this is a really good one. This is your sign that if you've read The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie and maybe even the second book, definitely continue with the series to read Heart Story. It's really good. The next book I have is also a beloved book that we all love, and that's Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas. Oh, Cam, 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 Cam. So this book follows Cam and Amelia. Oh my God. So Amelia is a spinster. She is the oldest woman in her family. She has a brother, but she's the oldest of her sisters and she, it's her job to basically take care of them so she kind of takes on this role of a mother a lot of older sisters do that but she's just been more focused on her family not really getting married and this book is a little different because even though Amelia is a spinster Cam is actually Romani so unfortunately I've said this my copy of this and the second book has the G word I just it's because I have an older copy but I know like the newer prints and the audiobook have completely take that word out, which I'm very happy about. But Cam being Romani, obviously he's looked down upon by some people in society, which is so stupid because that culture has so much to offer. And Amelia does see that. But Kev, who is someone that she, her family has taken in at a very young age when he was left on their property, he was like beaten to shit basically. He's also Romani. So it's kind of like, this is the first in a series, technically, the Hathaway series, and I'm making my way through the series. I love this series. I think, like, to be honest, between Bridgerton and the Hathaways, I find these books more enjoyable. I just find them more entertaining. That's a personal choice, 
but I'm just putting it out there. It's my favorite. I love them. Their romance is so fucking amazing. Cam is the perfect, perfect boyfriend, court, whatever, guy in the world. Like, he is amazing. I love him so much. He's one of my favorite male characters in historic romances. But Amelia does have the spinster kind of characteristic. She doesn't care. She does what she wants. She's used to being in charge and she has to kind of let Kim help her with a house that she's inherited. And their romance goes from there and it's fantastic and I love it. And if you haven't read this book, definitely check it out. It's so good. The next book I have is This Earl of Mine by Kate Bateman. So I recently discovered Kate Bateman and I absolutely love 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 her writing style so this is the first in the Bow Street bachelor series basically this whole series follows three earls three bachelors that work for Bow Street and it's their romances in May I actually finished the third book in the series and I'm so happy I did it's so good this one is a little bit different because it follows Georgiana and William and Georgiana she is very she's older her cousin is trying to force her to find a husband but she's like I'm not gonna let him do that to me obviously because she's a spinster she's older it's about time she got married blah 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 right she takes it into her own hands and she basically marries a, a criminal who's on death row which basically means she'll just marry them and then once he dies she'll become a widow and then she can live her life the, basically how she has been as a spinster but she'll just be a widow and she doesn't have that pressure of trying to find a husband well plot twist William who what she marries is not actually the criminal on death row he gets out because he's an earl and that's how it works and she bumps into William like weeks later at a party and she's like what the hell what is happening it is so good like William's not my favorite Earl in the series the second book and the third book are my favorite technically I'm recommending this one because she's a spinster and I really do like her and basically it's William trying to convince Georgiana like no we can still be together we can make this marriage work and it takes time but they do have their romance and they're not there's groveling but he's trying it's really it's a really good fun read it's pretty short for historical romance Kate Bateman's work I've realized after reading three of her books now they are historical romance not that they're continuing contemporary but they they're a little bit not lighter but like they read kind of like a contemporary romance would which is I always enjoy those so definitely check this book out check out this series it's so good if you ever read Kate Bateman definitely check her out and start with this I know she has other work she has another book coming out either this month in June or soon I think I saw on NetGalley but I'm excited to continue on and read her stuff because I really like the way she writes. The last book I have is Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake by Sarah McLean. The title is a mouthful. So basically what this book says, there's nine rules to break when romancing a rake. I don't know how to pronounce her full name, Calpurnia, but she goes by Callie. And her nine rules are kiss someone passionately, smoke chair root and drink scotch, ride a stride, fence, attend a duel, fire a pistol, gamble at a gentleman's club, dance every dance at a ball, be con be considered beautiful just once and basically she has to find a willing partner to do all those things with and that person is Gabriel St. John the Marquess of Ralston and I love this so much because literally Callie is just trying to do all these things to not be a spinster anymore like she wants to live she's followed all the rules but now she wants to break all the rules I just love it because Gabriel is just like going along with it thinking oh yeah it's fine I'll help her out like it's fine it's fine it's fine but then he's like but wait do I like her I don't want her to do that but wait she's doing that but I don't like her that she's doing that so it's really funny their banter is really funny in this book I loved it I think if I'm not mistaken, I listened to the audiobook of this. I really enjoyed it, but this is a thick book. But I really like Sarah McLean's writing. And this one is a really good one. She's a spinster, but it's not like, I mean, that is obviously why she's breaking all these rules. So it is very traditional in that way. She does have all the characteristics of a spinster. It's great. I enjoyed it. Definitely check out Sarah McLean, but start with this book as well. This is also first in a series, so that's always nice. Those are my seven spinster recommendations. I hope you enjoyed them. You can let me know in the comments if you've read any of these. You can let me know if you have any recommendations for me. As always, I always check the comments to see if anyone leaves any so I can pick them up because I do like this trope or it's not really a trope. I do like spinster historical romances. It's one of my favorites to read, so definitely, like I said, leave me any recommendations you have in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe for more content from me. I hope you're living a novel life, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.